the U.S. military and their involvement in a different type of pandemic, not like the COVID pandemic, but what if the Lyme disease pandemic was one that was actually created by the United States military? The government may have engineered ticks as bioweapons decades ago, accidentally or deliberately sparking the Lyme disease explosion that plagues millions across the country today. Uh, with Congress now ordering a probe, the internet is on fire asking, uh, was this a Cold War nightmare that got out of control, or is it something even more sinister? Here's what we know right now. Congress passed an amendment to the 2026 NDAA directing the GAO to investigate U.S. military and agency research on ticks and pathogens from 1945 until until 1972. The provision, which was uh, signed or authored by Representative Chris Smith from New Jersey, responds uh, to outstanding, I'm sorry, long standing claims of links to Lyme disease origins. Officials deny weaponizing, maintaining Lyme is a uh, naturally occurring disease that happens in nature, similar to the COVID 19 pandemic and virus, which uh, they told us at first started in nature and then made the leap from animal pang was it a pangolin was it a bat have we ever figured it, it, out it what started the with bats was? moved to pangolins and then we it's just was sort of up in the air i th always thought it was really funny at the beginning of covid where they they gave us this ridiculous explanation the but but, mark, the, but the entire mark. world is so accustomed to Chinese people eating really weird stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, that tracks. Yeah, that sounds about right. They, <laughs> sure. sure, they always eat bats, don't they? Yeah. Um, all right, here's the facts that we know about the case. Uh, the um, oh wow, the amendment was authored by Chris Smith, co-chair of Lime Caucus. Uh, it cites high Lime rates in his state and concerns for civilians and the military. Um, as far as the investigation, they have reviewed Department of Defense, NIH, USDA projects involving tick-borne pathogens from 1945 until 1972. Um, the entire basis for this is fueled by books and speculation <laughs> about Plum Island. If you've never seen it, the Plum Island facility, when we we were in the Hamptons last summer. We actually went up to see if we could get near the Plum Island facility. You cannot, um, but we were very close. Um, uh, they claim that the Lyme was created in a lab in Plum Island. In fact, is this... Uh, this is Dr. Marty McCary, McCary. Who you just had on the PBD podcast. The FDA commissioner. Yes, and he said as much when he was in the room with Patrick a few weeks ago. Here's that clip. Yeah. How many people have Lyme disease, including people we know? Mm -hmm. where, does, where did Lyme disease come from? I can tell you with a high degree of probability, it came from Lab 257 on Plum Island, just outside of Connecticut, 25 miles from Lyme, Connecticut, where the first case was described. How, how, how do we know that? First of all, you can read the book Bitten. And it's a great book. When the Nazi war criminal doctors were executed in Nuremberg, uh, at least one of them was spared and brought to the United States so that he could, you know, his mind could be used by the U.S. military for so-called biodefense. Dr. Traub. And they put him on Plum Island. And he had said very openly that he believed an incredible form of biowarfare was infecting ticks. And that, that's what Lyme disease is. And then it shows up 25 miles away. And by the way, that's not the only thing that showed up close by. They found um, half uh, rat, half deer carcasses on, yes. uh, uh, what's it called, on, uh, in the Hamptons, the last town. Montauk. Uh, Montauk. Montauk. That's me. Yeah, it showed, washed up in Montauk. This is like in the 90s. The Montauk what monster. What the hell's going on there? Again, a bunch of mad scientists doing things. And we... And all these people have Lyme disease. How many physicians know that it came from Lab 257, that Lyme disease came from? Approximately 1%, right? Because these are things we are, we are never honest with ourselves, that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. And sometimes we can cause more Preach. harm mm -hmm. than we can good by messing with Mother Nature. Now, according to the CDC, 700 and I'm sorry, 476,000 people in the United States are treated or diagnosed with Lyme disease every year. Uh, the Internet is ablaze. People are claiming Lyme disease is a bioweapon. Uh, Robert Malone even tweeted uh, that uh, he tied 
chronic disease cover-ups to lab leak theories like this. Um, so, Drew, you had mentioned a name as that clip was playing. What was the name of the doctor that you had mentioned? Um, I just lost it. Uh, Taub. Dr. Dr. Eric Ta Taub. Okay, and what, what is his significance? So he this? worked directly under Himmler. Um, which was the, Hitler's number two, and they ran research facilities where they messed with biologics and viruses. And he actually was part of Operation Paperclip and came here to the United States and worked here from 49 to 53, working with the CIA and the USDA, who actually oversaw Plum Island. And he's actually mistaken. It's about nine miles from Plum Island to Lyme. It goes right to the mouth of Connecticut River. And so they had experiments in 1951 where employees from the lab said that they dropped ticks um, on the artillery range that was located at Plum Island. How would you do that? Great question. <laughs> well, isn't that how it always goes with these military <laughs> biological research things? Those like you, some guy cooks it up in a lab and like, well, we let it out just to see what would happen. And oh, then we realized we couldn't actually keep I, track of it. I, I was amazed by the people that have Lyme disease. Justin Bieber, Shania Twain, Avril Lavigne, Ben Stiller, Bella Hadid, Kelly Osbourne, uh, Richard Gere. Um, and that gerbil thing too with him. So there's a lot going on with Richard. Gere, <laughs> well, the ticks might have been on the gerbil. <laughs> but uh, a, a lot of famous people. Yeah. You know? well, and, and it's. I don't know if you've ever known anybody with Lyme disease. It's crippling. I had a friend that was undiagnosed with Lyme disease for like a year, and they yeah. and this was like ninth or tenth grade. And we, they could, the doctors could not figure out what was wrong with him, but he was lethargic. It was like he had the flu every single day of his life. It was a terrible year and a half before he was finally diagnosed and they figured out what was wrong with him. But it's a debilitating disease. George W. Bush had Lyme disease. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> that, the, the lethargy and the slowness, yeah, sort of tracks. But this is, this is how it goes, where they, they run these experiments basically with no regard to who harms it, and then they dispose of it however they see fit, and the American people are left to clean up the mess. Same thing with, oh, we, we made all these drugs for our mind experiments during the Cold War. Let's just uh, let's give them to random black guys and see what happens, and the next thing you know, it's they never stopped. crack and well, LSD. They, yeah. and, and they did syphilis with the Tuskegee, Tuskegee Airmen as yeah. well, so there have always been these weird medical experiments on soldiers. So you sign up to defend your country, and then the people who are voted in office that you're there to protect then unleash these viruses on you, test them on you, see how your body responds to them, and then they find a way to make the, the response even worse or the disease right. even yeah. worse and weaponize that disease. Uh, disease now, have the further. decency to go into the military and acquire syphilis the old-fashioned way from <laughs> some... <laughs> third world prostitute but this is it, it it tracks rfk has even talked about this this was a thing he mentioned even before he came into office in the trump administration i, I was reading a, a quote from him a little while ago we talked about you know i used to go out into the woods and then come back home and pick 20 ticks off my legs mm -hmm. now if you do that you're going to get lyme disease so he's like it, it was honestly kind of funny how he framed it it's like we need to make the woods safe for kids to go into again it's like you want kids to just go wander around in the woods. But yes, it would be great if mm -hmm. people could go out into nature and not have to worry about a, a single tick bite ruining their life, which has been the reality for decades now. What was it, tick disease, the new one? Oh yeah, Lone I was going to get to that. So if you think that the United States government is not doing anything with this, is not responsible for Lyme disease, you must also take that in light of what we talked about maybe a month or so ago, the rise of alpha-gal syndrome spread by the Lone Star Tick. Mm -hmm. This is another tick-borne illness that, if a tick bites you, makes you deathly allergic to red meat. You are no longer able to process the sugars that are in animal proteins. So it's not just you can't have beef. You can't have basically any meat. You can't come in contact with certain kinds of leather or other organic materials. It ruins your life. It ruins your ability to go out in public because you could brush up against a leather sofa or someone's jacket and it would kill you. Uh, a guy died after eating a burger. I think in New Jersey, first first known case of someone dying from alpha gal syndrome. Go out. <laughs> and I won't even yeah. have it. I'll just choke on eating too much. Yep, I'm gonna have oh, a good what's old heart crazy attack. Is, what's crazy is also is that we have a history of this. RSV became the number one killer of pediatric patients in the country at one point in time, and that was also made during experiments for polio vaccines at the University of Maryland by the U.S. military. So it's not 
it's not isolated. These things occur all the time. And then in regards to Dr. Eric Traub, the USDA, once he started his lab over in Germany, the USDA actually went and visited it, went and visited his lab and inspected it. And then when he came back, he was actually at the dedication ceremony in 1957 for Plum Island, visited it two more times after that, and then was in the running to be in control of it when the gentleman who was in charge passed away or moved on to another job. They were going to put him in charge of it. Oh, yeah. Traub visited Plum Island Animal Disease center in New York on at least three occasions in 1950, uh, in the 1950s. Uh, and then they built Fort Terry on Plum Island, uh, was part of the U.S. Biological Warfare Program from 44 to 46, where they worked on veterinarian testing in connection with the weaponization of Bruselius. I don't even know if I pronounced that correctly. Does it sound good? Well, and the other thing is, is when this was first discovered, it was actually three different tick-borne illnesses that were discovered at the same time. It wasn't just what we know as Lyme disease now. So you had like Lyme arthritis, you had rickettsia, and then you had the cattle parasite. They all showed up at the same time, all within that area. And even to this day, 95% of all Lyme disease cases are from 14 states, and they're all surrounding Plum Island. And then if you go back to Traub, he actually was on Long Island working with the CIA before all of this at Camp Siegfried in the U.S. So he's like U.S. trained, U.S. inspected, and then we almost put him in charge. So... I don't know. I think there's a lot to this story yeah, the, and a lot that we will They were looking for, know. for a tool in the Cold War to, you know, yeah. can we deploy infected ticks into Russia and wipe out the Soviets? That makes perfect sense. Now we have members of the WEF saying we don't want people to eat red meat. Uh, cattle farming is too environmentally destructive. We need to nudge people away from consuming meat products. We had the, uh, a video of a bioethicist talking about this ethicist Eth anyone with ethicist in their title is immediately going to pick the most unethical thing saying that people won't give up meat willingly we could do experiments with the lone star tick and alpha gal syndrome to bioengineer the human population into not eating meat we have bill gates talking about well what if we made a strain of mosquitoes where we could infect them with essentially vaccines and release them so that they bite people and spread medication. Wouldn't that be interesting? We could eradicate diseases whether people want to be vaccinated or not. This is a very clear pattern of government and government adjacent entities having an interest in engineering insects to release things into the population. I so think, I'm not surprised I, at all. I think this is strictly, uh, you know, uh, related to us giving nerds a long leash. Like yeah. we're not we're not ditching out enough wedgies and wet willies because uh these nerds they get out of control. You know, you give them a little bit of power, a little bit of leeway, and they start making like weaponized ticks. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, I remember there was Bill Gates, uh, the Bates the Gates Foundation had made malaria a top priority and provided billions in grants for research, and then the implementation of geoengineered mosquitoes to help control the malaria uh, being spread. So there's always, it is, it's weird. We give these like nerds just a little bit of money, just mm -hmm. a little bit of enough free time. And then what do they do? They hang out with pedophiles and go to their pedophile island where they pedophile allegedly uh, with underage children. And then they geoengineer allegedly uh, mosquitoes to spread malaria rather than combat it. Underage mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make T-shirts beat your local nerd. Yeah. Uh, again, <laughs> and all of this is brought to you by the Allegedly Collection available at vtmerch.com. So if you want to purchase uh, an Allegedly shirt, it'll come cover you under topics like this. So if you like this clip, click right here. And if you want to see more like it, click right here. Stay angry, patriots.